Okay, let's go to talk about Uvalde. So we always want to stay on top of what's going on with that Uvalde CISD chief of police, Pete Arredondo, the person who made the call to make sure that police officers and law enforcement who were gathered in the hallway did not even go into the classroom. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Oh, very interesting. The school police chief is was a no-show at the Uvalde City Council meeting. So just again to explain this for people who may not remember, Pete Arredondo was also elected recently to the city council in Uvalde. And he was actually sworn in after the shooting while he was in disgrace. And they actually stopped that swearing in ceremony from being public. Since then, he has been in complete hiding. He, by accounts and early leaks from the investigation, was not being cooperative with the FBI and with the Texas Department of Public Safety whenever they're asking him for information. He has been confronted by CNN. He says, I'm not to say anything. He continues to try and live life in the shadows. He's closing off the city council. Uh, it, imagine that, a government building, a people's building, that they're like, no, no public allowed. He's actively working to throw reporters off of the sidewalks. People, He's hoping that all of us just lose, you know, lose interest in this case, but we need to hold this man accountable. And now he's a no-show at the city council meeting that he was just elected uh, to do. So it seems yeah. that he's very bad at doing two of his jobs it's, that he shouldn't even have in the first place. Yeah. I mean, it's not only that. It seems like that all the sort of uh, officials around him are protecting him. Yeah, they are. I let's, mean, let's we know they're honest. literally protecting him in terms of they brought in law enforcement to protect law enforcement. Um, you know, the sort of protection that those kids could have used uh, very much while they were being massacred mm -hmm. by a madman. Um, they also, you know, they lied to reporters about a board meeting being closed to the public yes. when in reality it wasn't to try to keep reporters from showing up. They actually closed the doors to City Hall and locked them so that you couldn't have any media access. You know, they seem to have been, um, there seems to have been a lot of complicity in this guy's vanishing act. So um, that is a very important part of what is going on here ultimately. I mean, the school board had a chance at their meeting to actually remove him from yeah, his Yeah, and they didn't do it. They declined to do it. Right. So, um, you know, at the same time, certainly the anger and emotion on the ground in Uvalde has, is not going away any time soon when lives have been taken, lives have been ruined, families have been destroyed. And the very latest incredibly hard to watch emotional testimony came from uh, a teacher who was wounded in this attack. He was in a fourth grade teacher. He's in room 111. His name is Arnolfo Reyes. Um, and he's, he had 11 kids in his classroom. Every one of those 11 kids shot and killed. <sighs> Arnolfo himself um, was gravely wounded uh, and is continuing to go through, you know, he's, he's alive, thank God for that. Um, but is continuing to go through surgeries. It's going to be a long physical recovery process for him. And I don't know, the emotional, mental recovery process, I don't know mm. if it's even possible to overcome what he's experienced. Here's a little bit of what he had to say about the response on that day. Did you feel abandoned in that moment by police, by the people who are supposed to protect you? Absolutely. After everything, I get more angry because... You have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. I had nothing. You're supposed to protect and serve. There is no excuse for their actions. And I will never forget them. I will never forget them. I know that I will not let these children and my coworkers die in vain. Absolutely. I will not. I will go anywhere to the end of the world, to not let my students die in vain. They didn't deserve this. Nobody in this world deserves this kind of pain. And what he wants specifically is to uh, raise the age of assault, the ability to purchase assault weapons, something that actually was passed in the House but has no chance at this point in the Senate. Um, but his experience on that day, he talks about how he could hear law enforcement yeah, in the hallway. Oh and then he could hear them saying, please, you know, please come out and talk to us. We promise there won't be any uh, harm done to you. And then they go away and nothing for, you know, something like an hour and 20 minutes. And he, it's heartbreaking because he, he says, you know, I did everything I could do. 
I told the kids to, um, he told the kids to go under a table and to pretend that they were asleep because that's, they had d gone through training for active shooters. Right. I mean, this wasn't a school district that was unprepared. Of course, they, it ends up that they were completely unprepared, but he did what the training had told him to do to have these kids hide under a table and pretend like they were asleep. And he said, you know, in the end, they were just like sitting, sitting ducks and every single one of them killed. He also wanted to make sure to tell the parents that the other teachers um, who were in the adjoining classroom who were both murdered, that they also bravely did everything they could for those kids. But, you know, they're completely defenseless and the people who were supposed to be there to help them did nothing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, props to him for speaking out that way. And, you know, whatever he wants to say politically, I think that's completely fine. And that's something I get annoyed by is people who attack, you know, victims in this case for pushing policy. Look, am I annoyed by David Hogg and all those people? Yeah, but don't attack kids who went through a traumatic experience. Unbelievably. It's a free country. People can say what they want. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.